Hey, what's up guys? It's Brian back again with another The Artist Influence and today I wanted to talk to you guys about something that we kind of hear a lot in the industry when we start out and it's this term that everyone seems to use called finding your own lane or identifying what your lane is or capitalizing on your own lane. What even does that mean? I mean, for me, your lane kind of just means your trajectory through the industry and how as opportunities start coming your way, your kind of progression as an artist and as a professional from wherever you start as a dancer to wherever you ultimately end up in terms of your goals and your dreams and things like that. But I think that there's a lot of things that kind of go into finding what your lane is and really capitalizing on that, that a lot of us are missing and it's causing us to become really bitter and really uh, negative towards other people in the industry and, and people who are our friends who might be getting opportunities that we feel we're more right for than they are. So first, I'm just gonna kind of define what your lane is, and this is just my definition. You can take it if you like it, or if you don't like it, it's fine, but it's just something that I've come up with. I really think your lane in this industry is basically identifying what about yourself makes you unique and sets you apart from the, from the crowd. Because, especially females, I mean, guys are a little bit luckier where there's less of us than you guys, than females, but females, there's so many of you guys in the industry and there's so much competition that's really important to set yourself apart and be able to have something about the you, you that makes you unique. Uh, an ability, um, your look, uh, your overall just kind of energy about you, your professionalism, whatever it is about you that's unique to you that will set you apart from the crowd and get casting directors and agents and the people who are really in charge of making the decisions of booking you and hiring you want to book you and hire you. And it takes a long time to figure out. I mean, it's really, finding your own lane is, is really finding yourself as a person and becoming um, comfortable with who you are and as an artist and, and what you have to give to the world. So I think the first step to that is just identifying who you are and what makes you tick. And it's easier said than done. A lot of us just run from one thing to another in this world and we're constantly focused on what we have to get done and things are on our to-do list that we never really give ourselves the chance to really look inside and figure out what makes us tick. And to be honest, the best way to do that, guys, is to be introspective and look inside, uh, read books, um, seek knowledge, uh, go through life and experience things and understand from those experiences, you take those life lessons and you learn about them and you use those experiences to inform your art. Just like I've been talking about in some of the other videos that I've posted, it's everything that goes on outside of the dance studio that makes you the artist you end up being. So I think that's step one. You gotta define who you are as a person and, and what makes you tick and what really is important to you. And I think step two is identifying where you kind of fit within the industry. And that's a lot easier said than done. I'm gonna mention um, a couple people in this video who I think have done an amazing job in their careers of carving out a specific lane, a niche, uh, a space for themselves in the industry that no one else other than themselves can really occupy. Um, the first person I'm going to throw out, his name is Sean Evaristo. I'm sure you guys have heard of him. He's the owner of Movement Lifestyle. Uh, it's a really, really successful studio now in LA. He owns the Movement Lifestyle Tour, which is a convention. Now he's opened up a bed and breakfast called the ML House that helps dancers coming over from other countries stay and have a place to stay in LA and network and all of those things. Sean started out in the industry just like all of us. He started out a young dancer and a hungry dancer. and you know, a dancer who is just auditioning, 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 and, and taking class and trying to book that first big gig. And uh, one of the things that he realized, and you know, I don't know this personally from talking to Sean, but just from what I can see and how I've observed his traje trajectory is that there came a point in time where he decided to kind of take things into his own hands and create something for himself and not just be a number and a person behind an artist dancing on stage who never gets any credit. Um, and obviously those are the, you know, the specifics of the industry and those are the rules of the industry and you know, we are backup dancers and we're there to make an artist look better. But what Sean did, which was genius to me, is at a time where he wasn't really booking a lot of work as a dancer, he decided to put the effort and energy into creating this brand. This brand that he came up with called Movement Lifestyle and he created a whole culture around this brand and now when you say movement lifestyle people instantly know what you're talking about if they're a dancer they think Sean Evaristo they think his whole team and all of those movement lifestyle people and now he's associated with Keone and Mari and Lyle Baniga and, and, and Devin Jameson and all these really successful and strong dancers that he's surrounded himself with by creating this brand of movement as a lifestyle 
and he's got clothing now and he's really become um, a, a really strong entrepreneur. And now, years later, after taking the time to do that and create his own lane in the industry and his own success, his own luck, now he's dancing on tour with Justin Bieber. Now he's doing the world tours. Now he's getting those opportunities that had he gotten so uptight and, and bitter about how he wasn't getting them at first, he would have never opened himself up to the opportunity to create this entire business and, and empire really that he's building for himself. So that's someone to really look out for. That's an amazing person who's carved out their own lane in this industry. One other person I'll talk about is Gigi Torres. I'm sure you guys have heard of her as well. She's a very successful choreographer from LA. She's an amazing teacher um, and she has really taken teaching and choreographing as her lane. She's really created a brand around herself with her Establish Your Empire experiences, which are workshops that help dancers with performance technique and all these different things. And she's really created um, a brand, just like Sean has, of how she can serve the dance community better. And Gigi was another one, you know, she started out in the industry just like everyone else, trying to book those jobs and do all those things. And instead of being bitter about what wasn't working out for her at the time, she created her own thing and she went her own way. And now she's got an entire empire that she's building under her own name. And instead of building an artist up and building their brand up, she's building her own brand up. Which I know it's really tough to see that far down the line, guys, especially if you're a younger dancer and you're new to the industry. I know you're only focused on really what's in front of you and getting that first gig and dancing for that artist and getting that dream job. But when you guys are done dancing 10, 15 years from now and you're done performing full time, you want to have something to fall back on and you want to have some type of legacy and some type of, of business that you can support yourself with for years to come. So. The one thing I can encourage you guys to do after watching this video is really take a look at where you are in the dance industry and where you want to go, your goals and dreams, and start thinking about how you can leverage, which means just using all of the different activities and different things that you're interested in, whether it be photography or videography or website design or mentorship and just being able to counsel people and talk to people as a, as a friend or... Um, maybe you're the person that all your friends come to with questions about their contracts. You seem to just know everything about the business. Like, think about all of those things that make you unique and use them to your advantage. Don't let them be a hindrance. Don't think about why you don't look right for a certain, for a certain job. Because the truth is, there's never going to be another you. And the best dancers, the best artists, the best actors, the best people in the arts community and the entertainment industry realize that. They realize that there will never be another them and no one, can, no one else can be them better than they can. So if you can really identify with that and let that be the story you're telling yourself in your mind instead of, I don't look like everyone else and I don't fit in, instead of that story, turn it into, I'm glad I don't fit in because now I can turn it into a strength and a power for myself, the sky's the limit. I'm gonna name one more person and I'm gonna close this video off. She's a very good friend of mine and I'm only really mentioning her because I'm just so, so proud of her, um, of all her accomplishments over this last year, but she's a New York dancer. Her name's Aurelia Michael. Um, I did Rhapsody's program with her, Motivating Excellence, the first season, and, and we've just grown so close as friends. And she's one of those people. She is one of those people who is just so unique that when she first came into the industry, and she'll tell you, stuff really wasn't working out for her and it wasn't really coming. The jobs weren't coming, the opportunities weren't coming, but she kept putting the work in, and she stayed positive, and she focused on what made her special. And instead of trying to conform to a mold, she intentionally went against that grain and created herself into this woman and artist that she now is. And now, the one dream job she had her entire year was dancing back up for Janelle Monae, and she just did it. She just achieved that goal. And it wasn't because that she stressed herself out for years and became bitter and, and angry towards the industry about what was not working out. No. She approached everything with love, positivity, and optimism, and she worked freaking hard, and it worked out for her. So let that be an example to you guys, everyone out there who's at that point in their career where maybe you're just starting out, maybe you've been in it for a while, and things might not be panning out the way you thought they would. Don't get angry at that. Don't get scared at that. Don't get mad at that. Embrace it. Take it for what it is and expand your awareness to really look at all of the different opportunities around you to create your own lane. Because trust me, the job opportunities will come. It's about creating the value of yourself as a brand, as an artist first. 
So that way people want to book you. They want you over anyone else. All right. So that's going to be it for this, the artist influence. That is really just about, you know, creating your own lane and embracing your own lane in the industry. I encourage you guys to be individuals. Don't conform. The industry does not need more robots. We have enough of them as it is. Try to be an individual and set something apart for yourself for the future. We'll see you guys back for the next The Artist Influence. Thanks a lot.